Hello everyone, today I'm going to present our paper with the title Performance Impact Analysis of Securing MQDT Using TLS. I want to start my presentation with a short motivation why we have chosen this topic. Therefore, I have the following figure, which shows on the x-axis the years from 2015 to 2025, and on the y-axis the amount of devices connected to the internet in billions. Thereby, in red, we see the amount of IoT devices, and in white, the amount of non-IoT devices. What we can see in this figure is that the proportion of IoT and non-IoT devices connected to the internet is completely changing over the years. When you look at the year 2015, we can see that mainly non-IoT devices had been connected to the internet. But when we look at the year 2025, we can see that mainly IoT devices are going to be connected to the internet. This means that the internet of the future is mainly consisting of IoT devices, which is in terms of security a problem, since the security of these devices isn't taken into account so far. This can, for example, be seen that 70% of the IoT devices are still communicating unencrypted, and that the lack of IoT security has been exploited in the past in forms of botnets, like the Mirari botnet, which performed DDoS attacks. Because of these reasons, we decided to analyze a commonly used security mechanisms can be applied to the IoT domain and how this would affect the performance of IoT devices. Concrete, we decided to use the commonly used security mechanism TLS and analyze how it would affect the performance of the commonly used IoT protocol MQTT. Therefore, next I'm presenting the functionality of MQTT and how it can be secured using TLS and which limitation this approach has. For the functionality of MQTT, we I have the following figure, which shows some subscriber IoT devices and the publisher IoT device. The publisher IoT device wants to send or publish a message to its subscriber, but there's no direct communication between the publisher and the subscriber. Instead, the publisher sends its data to the broker, who then forwards its message to the subscribers. Thereby, in case of MQDT, the publisher has different options how it important it is for him that its message arrive at its destination. These options are called quality of service, and in case of MQDT, we have three of them. Quality of service level zero means the publisher sends its message and forgets about it. Quality service level one means the publisher sends its data and takes care that it arrives at least once at its destination. And quality of service level two means the publisher takes care that its message arrive exactly once at its destination. So far to the functionality of MQTT. When we now use TLS to secure MQTT, this would mean that we encrypt the communication between directly communicating entities. For our example, this would mean that we encrypt the communication between the publisher and the broker and between the broker and the subscriber. So an attacker can't just simply intercept messages and read them anymore since they are now encrypted. But we have still the problem that the broker can decrypt all messages and therefore knows all messages. So using TLS to secure MQTT is only an option when the broker is a trustworthy party. But for many use cases, this is an sufficient assumption. And we want to highlight that our performance analysis is only for these scenarios where the broker is a trustworthy party. So far to the background. Now, when we want to analyze the performance impact of MQTT using TLS, we need an IoT measurement setup, we need workloads and we need met metrics so that we compare the use of MQTT with and without TLS. Let's start with the IoT measurement setup. We have chosen an ESP to run an MQTT client on it which can choose between all three quality of service levels. Thereby, the ESP is a commonly used microcontroller. We power the ESP using the Elego power supply module 1PC, since it can directly provide the 3.3 volt required by the ESP. In order to be able to measure the energy consumption of the ESP, we are using the Yokogawa as a power meter. The MQTT client running on the ESP can send messages to an MQTT broker running on a Windows 10 laptop via an access point. Next, I'm going to present the workloads. We have defined the workloads using state diagrams, and we take the broker connection setup and publish operation of the SP into account. 
Here on the right side, we can see an example of this state diagrams. It contains the broker connection setup of the ESP, and it simply consists of the ESP connecting with the broker, measuring the time it needs, therefore, then closing all connection and reconnecting with the broker and repeating this for a predefined amount of steps. So far to the workloads, um, as metrics, we take throughput, energy efficiency, and the broker connection time into account. And we are using Gaussian error propagation in order to be able to also take the accuracy of the used measurement equipment into account. So that we now have the IoT measurement set up, workloads and metrics, we are now able to perform performance measurements in order to determine the impact of MQDT secured by TLS. Thereby, I can only show a small part of our performance and evaluation because of time constraints. One of the performance evaluations I want to show is how TLS impacts the time needed by the ESP to connect with the broker. Therefore, I have the following figure, which shows the time needed by the ESP to connect with the broker in different network conditions when the ESP uses TLS, what we can see in blue, and when it doesn't use TLS, what we can see in orange. What we can see in this figure is that there's no real difference in the time needed by the ESP to connect with the broker, regardless if it uses TLS or not, when we have perfect network conditions, for example, like in an industry 4.0 environment. But what we can see is that when the network conditions deteriorate, the ESP needs way more time to connect to the broker when it uses TLS instead of when it doesn't use TLS. The last performance evaluation I want to present for this presentation is about the energy efficiency when we are using quality of service level zero and have perfect network conditions. Therefore, I have the following two figures. On the left side, we can see the energy efficiency of the publishing operation for different payload sites of the ESP when the ESP doesn't use the energy saving mode between the publishing operations. And on the right side, we can see the same, but the ESP is using the energy saving mode between the publishing operations. What we can see in both figures is that there's no significant difference in the energy efficiency when the ESP uses TLS or when it doesn't use TLS. The only difference that we can identify is that the ESP is way more energy efficient when it uses the, de the deep sleep between the publishing operation. At the end, I want to summarize my presentation. We have designed an evaluation environment in order to be able to analyze the performance impact when MQDT is secured using TLS. Therefore, we have designed metrics that also take the accuracy of the used measurement equipment into account. We have designed an IoT typical measurement setup where we can adjust different network conditions and where the MQDT client can use all three quality of service levels. We also defined IoT typical MQDT workloads in order to perform performance measurements when we are using MQDT with and without TLS. To summarize our results, we can say that TLS has no significant performance impact when we have perfect network conditions, but that we can prove that TLS has a significant negative impact on the performance when the network conditions deteriorate. For all of you who are interested in a more detailed description of our evaluation environment and our performance evaluations, I would recommend reading our paper.